Shalom. Kahla Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shah Bahasham, Rakaha Gadash, the bonds unto the apostles and the elders who rule well, who taught me this truth, enough respect to the fellow Aki. The house of David, the hopeful elect, peace to the elect. Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah Barakatham to you, Aki, as well as the Agwa that are listening and learning. This is your brother Yahweh Sat from the Birmingham branch coming to you again with this 100% doctrine. And this lesson is going to be entitled, That Was Then. This is now coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. As in the days when he was born, you had certain events taking place. Signs in the heavens. All right. You had actually shepherds in the field feeding the flock, and we're going to get that. And this is what we should do. Uh, should be able to do. We should be able to abide. We should be able to endure. All right. This is the manner of conversation we should be in with our holiness and godliness. Godliness. So without further ado, we're going to get into these precepts, Lord willing. This will be edifying and comforting. I'm going to start in the book of Luke, chapter 2, and verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Now when you go into that word taxed, in the blue letter, Strong's G583, Apographo. Apographo. So this is the uh, the modern day census system to write off, copy, to enter into register or records, to enter into public records, the names of men, men, their property, and income to enroll. Okay. This is why they send these censuses out. All right? And to keep up with the people. There's no new thing under the sun. <clears throat> Verse 4 it tells you, And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Meaning what? He's an Israelite, man. True, indeed, son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. On down to David. Let's jump to verse 8, because this is the point. And there, we're, and there we're in the same country. Pay attention to the word in here. Country. Shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Now, we're going to get a few words in here. We're going to get shepherds in a blue letter. Strong's G, 4166, Poimane. Poimane. Now, the shepherds these days are the teachers, starting with the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Herdsman, shepherd, in a parable, he, to whose care and control others have committed themselves, and whose precepts they have. Follow the presiding officer, man, uh, manager, director of any assembly. So of Hamashiach, the head of the church, of the overseers of the uh, uh, anointed assemblies of kings and pr princes. So we're the true Christians. You understand? We are the followers of Hamashiach. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh who the world ignorantly called Jesus. You know, but it goes to say whose precepts they follow. So these are the, the old shepherds abiding in the field. Just for sake of edification, let's get the field. All right. A piece of land used for particular purposes, especially a, a, an area marked out for game or sport, large area or land 
or water completely covered in a particular substance, especially snow. All right, that's not, not what I'm looking for. But we are in the field. We're in the streets. We're in the highways and hedges. It says keeping watch over their flock by night. Let's get the word watch. And this is what we, we earnestly do, man. Woefully. All right. Uh, not woefully, but willingly. It says look at or observe attentively over a period of time. Keep under careful protective or secret observation. Exercise care, caution, restraint. All right. Let's get it in the blue letter. Which is just going to say watch. All right. Strong's G, 5438. Fulake. Fulake. So these, these shepherds was keeping watch over their flock by night. All right. It says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Now that great joy, all right, and the good tidings was the gospel, was the good news, all right, was the comforter, which came in the form of a babe, which is Yahweh Shah, the birth of our Lord and Savior. That was then, and this is now, and we're going to prove that. Let's go to some signs, all right? Stay in, book, uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 21, this is verse 10. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall be there, shall there be from heaven. What we just I mean, what what are we in the midst of? Um in the last past eight hundred years, man. The um the planet certain doing certain alignments, you know, uh, such as Jupiter and Saturn. These are great signs from heaven that the Lord is showing us. You understand? We're going to go back to Luke chapter 2, but let's go to 12. Because guess what those shepherds was doing? Why the angel appeared unto them. They was watching over their flock by night. Now, was it actually nighttime when the sun was down and the pitch black night? Come on, man. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, starting at 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. And this is the whole uh, point of the lesson. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet. And will come forth and serve them. This is the marriage supper. And we're out here bidding to the marriage. Daily. By these sit downs. Alright. Weekly. By going out on the highways and hedges. Verse 38. And if he shall come in the second watch. Or come in the third watch. And find them so. Blessed are those servants. You see that? It says, and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken in. Be ye therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when ye think not. You see that? So we know that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah is going to come swiftly, fast, urgent. He's coming to save his people. Those people are the elect. Let's go to the book of Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see? And this is symbolized today. This is uh, That was then. This is now. We all know about the flood, but the, this flood is, is going to hit you off guard as well. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, you know, 
what people are going to be doing. Verse 38, for as in the days of Noah, for in the days that were before the flood. What? For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And here it is. We're out here warning you that a man child is about to be born. You understand? You have signs in the uh, heavens. You have signs in the moon and the sun. Hey, things are taking place drastically, man. Prophecies are being fulfilled. Let's go back to the book of uh, uh, Luke, chapter 2, and verse 8. <clears throat> and it says again, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. What that word abiding mean? So like you. Let's get a quick definition of that word abiding. Whoa, enduring. Lasting a long time enduring of a feeling or memory. Whew. Stir up our pure minds, man. All right. Call Halal Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right, for sending the prophets forth. All right, double honors unto the uh, uh, apostles and the elders of the great millstone because they was abiding. All right, without those men, all right, the apostles and the elders, you know, hey, some people wouldn't have been, you know, woken up. All right, and what, what they was doing, man, they was keeping watch over the flock by night. Is not this the land of the valley of the shadow of death? Real quick definition for uh, night. All right, darkness all the time. <laughs> A period of darkness in, we, in which we know that 24 hours at a time, uh, uh, a period between afternoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go back. <clears throat> darkness, dark, hours of darkness, nighttime, dead of night. And this is that night we're in. And we're waiting for the coming of the Son of Man, all right, which is our light, you know. So these two shepherds, they was in that conversation, man. All right? Prophecy. That's what conversation that was in. That's what manner, all right, of mind and conversation you should have. Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. See, this is how we know that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is returning soon. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. And up on her head, a crown of 12 stars. We're talking about wisdom here. We're talking about knowledge here. We're talking about the 12 tribes of Israel here. And she, being in, being with great child, travailed in birth and pain to be delivered. This is these birth pains, man. All right? You can read up. We're going to jump to verse 5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And this is going to be the coming of Yahweh Shai, our Savior. And her child was caught up unto the Most High and to his throne. All right? And that was after he was crucified, man. All right? At the third day, he rose. All right? <clears throat> he got that glory for being that uh, ultimate sacrificial lamb, for being there to redeem his people, but he had to fulfill their prophecy. So do we do. So we have to stand in our lot. We have to abide in the field. We have to keep watch over the flock by night. This is no easy task because what? Someone has to do it. And this is what manner you should be in so you won't be caught off guard. It, it tells you that if the thief, I mean, if the man knew what manner of hour, if the Son of Man come, he would not have suffered his house to be broken in. Roughly paraphrased, we just read it. Second Peter 3, I'm going to start at 10. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. What is that talking about? And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So, yeah, we're talking about 
nuclear destruction, a nuclear holocaust here, man. All right? And those of you that's of the world and have your works of the world and trust in the world, you're going to be burned up therein, man. You know? Simple, sad, and put. Verse 11, seeing that, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, man? You think those two shepherds in the field was worried about anything else? Fear came up on them, just like fear came up on the men of the Lord, just like fear came up on Noah. He was moved with fear. All right? The terror of the Lord, we persuade many, man, you know? By the tale of the Lord, we should be, what? Bidding to the marriage, man. You know? Because what are we doing? Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. This is what he's saying in verse 11. Seeing all these things shall be dissolved. We know it's going to be dissolved. So we looking forward to it. We're not looking forward to be settled here in Babylon the Great. We're not looking forward to uh, uh, receiving reparations, benefits, or fucking Maxine from this damn devil, man. We're looking for and hastening until the coming of the day of God, man, which is our Lord and Savior. How about Shem Yahusha? Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. And this is what manner of person you should be. Okay? Check this word new out. Not existing before, made, introduced, or discovered recently, now for the first time. This is what I want. Number two, already existing, but seen, experienced, or acquired recently or now for the first time. Was not uh, 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 Solomon's kingdom beautiful and great? Come on, man. Three, just beginning or beginning a new and regarded as better than what went before. In this kingdom of heaven that we're hasting for and looking for, all right, is going to be way much better than what we have observed and what we have seen in our past lives, man. So this is what manner of conversation you should be in in these days. The conversation is prophecy. Let's go back to Luke. You see? It says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And that's a remnant. It's not to everyone. It's to, it's a, it's to all the one-third, <laughs> the elect of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. You know? So let's jump to 15. Because that was then and this is now. Meaning what? We had the coming of the Lord and Savior. All right. How about Shem Yahweh being birthed? And you have it again now when he's about to show himself and he's not going to meet you as a man. All right. Isaiah 47, man. Verse 15. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from, the, from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, what conversation is this? Prophecy. Let us go even unto Bethlehem and to see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Call Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. You see? So the angel was letting them know, hey, this is it's about to be a coming of a savior, man. How would you how would you know that if you're not serving the Lord? How would you, how would you know that if you're not abiding in the field and keeping watch over the flock by night? If you love him, you should feed his sheep, feed his lambs. This is what manner of conversation you should be in because that was then and this is now. That's all I had on that. Shalom.
on to the next one.